Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Kate Flash, B, 0, 3. Oh, man! I knew we'd be the last ones here. Hello, team. Welcome to the Watchtower, and welcome also to our sixth and a little late installment of Secret Origins. In this series, we'll be diving into the history of the main characters in Young Justice, the heroes, the supporting cast, and even the villains. Today, we celebrate Young Justice's third oldest sidekick, Kid Flash. That's right, there's another Young Justice sidekick that's younger than Dick, but older than Wally. More on that in a little bit. Note that in this episode of Secret Origins, I'm going to be discussing both the seasons of Young Justice, as well as the Justice League animated series, and the live-action Flash series a little bit as well. So though we have no idea what will happen in Young Justice Outsiders, some of the arcs that we talk about could spoil what's to come in the next season because we're talking about so much, so keep all that in mind. But with all that out of the way, let's dive in. Orion. Talk while you still have a jaw. Hey, hey! Would you guys please take it down a notch? Let me handle this. James, you're off your meds, aren't you? I'm better off without him. Take him if I start feeling down. You know that's not how the medicine works. You're not well. I'm fine. You want to throw some darts? No. Listen, James, you're wearing the suit again. I am? Well, what do you know? Here's the deal, buddy. Tell me where those guys went, and I promise to come see you in the hospital. We'll play darts. The soft kind. Okay, they're gonna ambush you at the Flash Museum. See, that's all we needed. Come on, we better get over there. What about your enemy? All oh, right, dude, as soon as you finish your drink, turn yourself in. Got me again, Flash. So there's several characters, as the same with, you know, Aqualad and Robin. There are several characters that carry the name Kid Flash. So we're going to focus mostly on Wally West, but we're going to be talking about some others as well. The first appearance of Wally West uh, as Kid Flash was in The Flash in the very you know, the vo first volume, which is the original series, number 110, in December of 1959. As The Flash, his first appearance was in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the final issue number 12 in March of 1986. He was created by John Broom and Carmine Infantino. The first appearance of Bart Allen, who of course is Impulse but also became Kid Flash and The Flash, appeared in Flash number 92 in July of 1994. As Kid Flash, his first appearance was in Teen Titans volume 3 number 4 in December of 2003, and then as The Flash in the series The Flash, The Fastest Man Alive, number one in May of 2006. Impulse, uh, the Bart Allen Impulse was created by Mark Wade and Mike Waringo. And there's another character that goes by Wally West as well. We'll talk about him in a little bit. We're going to refer to him as Wally West 2. Uh, his first appearance was in The Flash Annual number three in 2014, and he was created by the team of Van Jensen, Robert Venditti, Ron Friends, and Brett Booth. And then there's a fourth person, actually probably the third person, because she comes before the Wally West too. And actually, does she come in before? Oh, she barely makes it just after Impulse, actually. But uh, her name is Iris West. We'll get into her and why that's the case. She appeared first in Kingdom Come number 3 in July of 1996, and she was also created by Mark Wade as well as artist Alex Ross. So, <laughs> Wally West. Wally West is one of the oldest sidekicks in comics history. Of course, the sidekick trend was kicked off with Robin back in 1939-1940, and the success of that character in driving the sales of the Batman comics led to this history of legacy characters that DC is so famous for. In 2011, IGN ranked Wally as number eight on their list of the top 100 superheroes of all time, ahead of actually any other speedster, stating that Wally West is one of the DC Universe's greatest heroes, even if he does not rank as the original Scarlet Speedster. In 2013, Wally placed sixth on IGN's top 25 heroes in DC Comics. 
As far as his origin is concerned, in the comics, Wally West was a huge fan of The Flash. But he had no idea that his aunt's boyfriend at the time, then, you know, future husband, Barry Allen, was actually his hero. When Wally went to go visit Barry at his forensics lab at the police department or wherever he was working at the time, uh, the chemical and electrical accident that gave Barry his powers repeated itself, meaning that lightning struck through a window and hit all these chemicals and dumped on Wally, making him into Kid Flash. It turns out that Wally's young age, unfortunately, and his still developing physiology clashed with his new powers. So just before the Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, huge DC Comics event in the mid 80s, Wally had actually already retired from the Titans and retired from the superhero game in general. He had uh, at that point, I believe he'd won the lottery. He was rolling in money. There were some problems financially, though, and his responsibility. He decided to go to college. There's just a lot of stuff going on in the Titans around that time. But the reason he retired wasn't because of any of that. It was because he found that as he got older and his physiology changed, whenever he used his powers, his body would deteriorate. He had a speed disease. So during Crisis, the Crisis series, of course, Barry dies saving the earth and Wally's disease was put into remission during a confrontation with the the major antagonist of the crisis series the anti-monitor uh, allowing him to eventually take on the mantle of the flash even though Wally took over the flash's identity his power had always been significantly less than Barry's Barry could achieve speeds very near the speed of light, where Wally could barely top the speed of sound. Uh, it wasn't until the return of the Reverse Flash, which is Eobard Thawne. Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash, that name may sound familiar to some people from the, the live-action TV series. In the comics, right before Barry died, Eobard Thawne, Eobard Thawne, it's a mouthful, died as well at the hands of Barry. And... In this one story arc with Wally, the reverse Flash bef from a timeline before he died showed up, actually even before he became a villain, if I remember correctly, showed up in Wally's modern timeline, and Eobard was looking to take the place of Barry. What ended up happening, though, when he returned, when Eobard Thon showed up, Wally's powers made a significant leap. And like I said, but for those of you who've seen the first season of The Flash starring Grant Gustin, the live action series that's currently on, the storyline where Thawne wants to push Barry's speed faster and faster in the case of the TV series because he wants to like recover his own speed to be able to get back to his own time. But here, that story arc, that Barry's speed increase arc, is an arc that originated with Wally. Instead of pushing Barry in the comics, who was obviously still dead, Thawne inadvertently helped Wally realize that the limits on his powers were purely psychological. So when he was younger, they were probably physiological. But after Barry died and Wally took over his place, Wally never really wanted to accept Barry's death and truly take his place as the Flash. But after facing Thawne, and Thawne, who had been basically threatening to take over Barry's place and perhaps walking a thin line of morality... Wally pushed past his limits, and didn't just push past his limits, he even started to surpass Barry's power. Uh, in the 2011 New 52 reboot, which was, incidentally, the direct result of the Flashpoint Paradox storyline, if you haven't read the comics Flashpoint Paradox, it, it's, there's a lot going on in that arc, but you can, and I highly recommend picking up the animated movie Flashpoint Paradox. Please keep in mind that Flashpoint Paradox, that animated series, is not for kids. I don't remember what the exact rating is, but please be aware of that. Don't, don't watch it with your littles. It's a fantastic story and one of, one of the best DC animated movies they've done. It's fantastic. But in that, in the New 52 rebo reboot, the Wally West that we have known appeared to have never existed after the reboot. So the Wally West of the New 52 was reinvented to be a, a biracial hero. And we're going to talk about him. This is the Wally West 2 I was referring to earlier, and we'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, but in Rebirth, which was not quite a reboot, but kind of more of a tweak of the New 52 continuity to maybe 
kind of get it online with some of the things that were, uh, DC was hearing from the fans. This Wally West, the Wally West 2, was revealed to be the cousin of the original who had, and the original who had become lost in the Speed Force for a decade and literally removed from the New 52 timeline's history, though he was still alive. So the New 52 rebirth arc opens with the original Wally attempting to escape the Speed Force and fix the timeline. Uh, it's a reoccurring storyline for Wally to get lost in time or lost in space or in the Speed Force and when, whenever that happened. His girlfriend or wife of, uh, at the time, Linda Park, had always been his what he called his lightning rod, helping him return to the world uh, or the time that she was in. In Rebirth, that stopped being the case. So though Wally could temporarily you know, spend a lot of energy to appear in front of people in this normal timeline, they, they didn't remember him. He literally didn't exist. And so people would basically have these little brief nightmares of this dude sticking his face out of a, out of a portal, uh, a la the live you know, Batman, Superman movie that just came out. Wally, because of the fact that, that Linda stopped being this lightning rod for him, Wally eventually gave up. But one thing he wanted to do before he just let the Speed Force take him was to appear in front of Barry one last time to thank him for his previous life and then give up and move on to the Speed Force. Now, of course, Barry doesn't recognize him at the time. He has no idea who this person is. But at the last moment, Barry's memories of Wally, at least some of them, come back, at least long enough for Barry to help pull Wally from the Speed Force and then back into history. So we mentioned earlier this Wally West 2 character. Before I get to him, though, I want to talk a little bit about Bart, right? So we're going to be focusing on Wally a bit here, but you can't really have a discussion about Kid Flash without talking about Bart. So the pre-52 Bart, which is the Bart that I'm more familiar with, was the grandson of Barry and Iris West Allen. Uh, he was the son of Don Allen, D-O-N Allen, the boy of the Tornado Twins that Barry and Iris have. Of course, the daughter's name is Dawn, D-A-W-N. Again, I think I said it in the series, but like, don't do that to yourself or your kids. That's just terrible. You, who's going to know who you're talking to? But Dawn, the son, had married uh, Melanie Thawne. Uh, yes, that is a descendant of Eobard Thawne. So he married Melanie Thawne, and they had their son, Bart. The Allen's other twin, Dawn, the female, marries a man named Jevin Ognatz, and their daughter, Jenny Ognatz, becomes the 31st century speedster known as Excess, who is Bart's cousin and is a member of the Legion of Superheroes that you hear me talk about on the show so much. Unlike modern-day speedsters, though, Bart was born with his powers. Uh, though being the descendant of two powerful speedsters caused some side effects, that, namely that he aged at an accelerated rate. In his pre-52 history, Bart was raised inside a virtual reality, basically holodeck or matrix, that could keep up with his accelerated physical and mental aging. Now, he didn't even enter into that until he was age-wise mentally two years old, like chronologically two Biologically, he was 12. So once they figure out the solution, they put him in this computer that can keep up with the speed of his mind, which educates him up. But unfortunately, if his condition continued, he was still eventually going to die of old age very quickly. Grandmother, Iris, uh, <laughs> who, along with anybody who's associated with Barry Allen, has spent a lot of her career time traveling went to that future, had seen Bart, had sent Bart back in time to where Bart met Wally. Uh, Wally, believing his condition to be like potentially a side effect of this, of maybe even excess speed force in his young body, Wally tricked Bart into a race using uh, an absolutely incredible amount of speed, effectively shocking his system back into aging normally. Unfortunately, being essentially raised inside a video game left Bart with both <laughs> impulse control issues, pun intended, and a skewed view of both reality and 
real consequences to your actions. Bart was taken in by the retired speedster Max Mercury to be trained. Uh, down the line, Max disappears, and he, he gets uh, basically adopted and trained by Jay Garrick. And, and the first dozen issues or so of his 90s miniseries, written by Mark Wade, are absolutely brilliant. The way that Mark Wade shows impulse learning about these consequences and the, the normal life of people around him is amazing. Go check that out. After the New 52 reboot... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Bart's origins are com- almost completely unrecognizable. So instead of all of that stuff I just shared with you, he is instead a convicted criminal from the 31st century named Bartor, Bartor, who joined an extremist like religious organization and was sent back in time as some kind of witness protection program to await trial. Yeah, it, it's weird. I don't, I don't, I don't know that one as well. So. If you like the new 52 Bart and you have some ideas about him uh, that you want to share, please, you know, connect with us at, uh, at our Twitter or the email. Um, So with, with, with Bart kind of discussed, let's move on to this Wally West too. So the new 52 attempt to reboot Wally and all of their title, 52 of their titles, they tried to add some really some much needed diversity to DC titles. And so they rebooted Wally as a biracial hero. After Rebirth, the original Wally was reintroduced, and Wally West 2, his origin was retconned so that he was instead the son of Iris's older brother, Daniel, who was at the, <laughs> the time the latest incarnation of the Reverse Flash. Oh, comic continuity, how we love you. Uh, Wally 2's origin is also interesting and strange. So a future and, I guess, jaded, darker Barry Allen learns of Wally 2's death and attempts to go back in time to prevent it. But when he goes back in time, he ends up fighting a 15 years younger version of himself. And I guess the fight imparts some of the speed force into Wally 2 because he has the genetic potential for that, being related, and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on there. I don't know much about Wally 2's uh, history or origins. I do know that they, or seem to know anyway, that they kind of nodded to that, again, with the Flash live-action series, where the Wally West of that series is African-American. Great actor playing a great part. I love that interpretation of Wally. Um, so I, th- I, because I like that version of Wally, I think it's a real solid, interesting version of Wally. I do wonder if there's any parallels to this character of Wally. And it just it does go to show, though the original Wally was missed and they chose to bring him back into DC Comics, it does show that these characters can be reinvented in lots of different ways. And as long as the heart of those characters are 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 there, um, or you have like someone like Calder who is just an incredible, incredible character that adds to the continuity instead of just tries to replace it or write over it. So then we come to the fourth slash third uh, Kid Flash, who is Iris West. So the Kid Flash that was introduced, uh, kind of introduced, nodded to in the incredible Kingdom Come miniseries, strangely enough, also written by Mark Wade, like Carrie Kelly, who is the much beloved Robin in Dark Knight Returns, I, I just, I don't tend to put a lot of continuity energy into the characters from the experimental one shots of the seventies and the eighties and the nineties, just largely because there've been so many of them, uh, especially in the pre-crisis infinite earth days. And, you know, even the, the incredible arcs that you can read in DC's elseworlds titles. So you don't hear me talk much about Carrie Kelly, even though I, she was a very influential Robin in history uh, you're not going to hear me mention much about her, you know, except within the context of talking about Dark Knight Returns. So, but having said all that, Iris West, this character of Iris West, who is the daughter of Wally and Linda Park West, becomes Kid Flash in a number of alternate timelines and has appeared in regular DC series on a number of occasions, including, as interesting to me, including as a part of a group of teen heroes from the future comprised of the children of the other Titans. So a character named Nightstar, who's the daughter of Nightwing and Starfire, very original name, Darkstar, 
uh, son of Donna Troy, a.k.a. Uh, the original Wonder Girl, uh, now Troya. Tula, kind of makes you think. Tula, the daughter of Tempest. And Red Hood, who is the daughter of uh, Roy, a.k.a. Arsenal from the series. Iris West, her powers pretty much echo those of Wally's, though they aren't quite as broad. Uh, and we're going to get into that a little bit. Wally West, though Barry Allen used to be called the fastest man alive, and was certainly faster than the original Jay Garrick, Wally West is hands down the most powerful speedster in the DC universe. So though her powers echo that of Wally's and therefore Barry's, um, his power sets are kind of through the roof. So let's talk about that. So in the comics, as I mentioned before, Wally didn't have the power to vibrate through walls, just like in Young Justice. His speed was somewhere just short of or just past uh, the speed of sound. So a lot of the comics interpretation kind of carries straight over to uh, the Young Justice interpretation. In addition to that, Barry's metabolism wasn't turned up in the same way that Wally's was. Barry never had to have this uh, constant food calorie intake like Wally did. And it seems to be because, you know, it's come up on the show, I think, we've discussed this, this idea that, you know, if Wally had the same experiment affect him as Barry, then why does he not have the same powers? And for me, it's always felt like it was a genetic potential. Basically, this speed force, lightning bolt, chemical experiment thing, however you want to interpret what happens, was an overlay that fit like a puzzle piece over Barry, genetically speaking. Wally, even though Barry's his uncle, he's his uncle on Iris's side. He's not blood related to Barry at all. In fact, if I remember correctly, I don't think he's blood related to Iris either. I think he's an adopted nephew. So because of that, his genetic structure is completely different. Like Impulse says in Young Justice, you don't have, you know, the Allen family eyes, right? So in addition to that, he got those powers from that experiment very young. And as they as they reflect in the comic series, that has an effect on his physiology as he grows up and changes, right? So physiologically, things change, you know, hormonally, things change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In the comics, he developed this disease and, and ends up retiring because of the disease. In Young Justice, of course, he retires because he and Artemis just want to have a normal life together. And um, they don't want to get back in the costumes unless, of course, they have to. But in the comics, after this, this run-in with Eobard Thawne, where Wally starts to let go of his restrictions, this is just before the concept of the Speed Force was introduced to DC Comics, again by Mark Wade. You'll notice the trend here. So his powers became intense in that he could approach and or even surpass the speed of light, which Barry's limit was the speed of light. But in addition to that, Wally was starting to exhibit a lot of other powers that were very different than Barry's, which were things like his ability to impart speed into other people. So instead of carrying people, he could run, and it almost seemed like of, at first they were trying to draw it or write it like he, he was catching people in his backdraft and they would come after him. But that wasn't what was happening. It was that he was literally imparting parts of um, the speed force or speed into these people. But he could use it for other things as well, including accelerating people's healing factors, like himself and Barry ended up having as well. He, of course, has an accelerated healing factor now as well. He did learn how to vibrate through objects. But the problem was is that when he vibrated through objects, the object tended to become unstable and explode. So he could get through it, but then it became a dramatic choice. Like, okay, there are people who are in this building and they're uh, being held hostage. I could vibrate through the walls and impart speed force onto them and get them out, uh, except that that would probably blow the building up, right? So it was a powerful ability, and he used he learned to use it offensively uh, eventually, but it became a very interesting choice, in my opinion. His control of the speed force also allows him to absorb kinetic energy. Uh, in one <laughs> super over-the-top story arc, the team literally had to move or shift the planet. So Wally 
God, it sounds like so super friends from the 70s. Wally had to basically absorb and ground the kinetic energy potential of the Earth. That's a bit much for me. But you get the idea. He can change and alter speed, kinetic energy, inertia, momentum. In Young Justice, as we mentioned before, he doesn't have any of these powers. And we don't have any like psychological emphasis for him not developing his powers more. Unlike Impulse, who's a little younger and not quite as physically strong, uh, as, as Emily pointed out, which I think is really interesting, there's a subtle but important difference, even though Impulse is incredibly faster, Wally is physically stronger. And I don't think just physically stronger, to me, I don't think Wally's physically stronger simply because of his age. Like he, I really feel like the metabolism aspect of what his powers are mean that he doesn't just get charged by whatever these superpowers are to run quicker I feel like like his continuously needing to eat tells me that not only is metabolism heightened, the amount of internal damage we all do to ourselves when we work out accelerates as well. And because of that, when you're weightlifting, for example, you're actually tearing muscle and your body puts extra resources and energy into building those muscles to try and help prevent them from being like these micro tears from happening again later on. If that's happening with Wally's body as opposed to Barry's or Impulse's body, then Wally may be significantly stronger than we think. And there's some evidence for this, too. I'm not just pulling this out of nowhere. In the Justice League Unlimited animated series, there is an episode where they first run into Solovar. Solovar is the head of Gorilla Security. <laughs> head of security? Gorilla Security? Head of security in Gorilla City, the... the He's the agent that leaves Gorilla City to try and hunt down Grodd. And Green Lantern and Flash run into him at first. And Solovar and Flash need to escape somewhere. <laughs> they're actually being surrounded by a bunch of mind control people and they're trying to run away. And Flash, and in, in that series is Wally, turns to Solovar and says, how much do you weigh? And Solovar says, I don't know, somewhere around 400 pounds. He might even say 400 kilos. I think he said 400 pounds which actually sounds a little light maybe for a gorilla of his size, but Wally picks him up and then runs full speed with him. Now, he's tired when they stop, but they stop blocks away. 400 pounds? That's crazy. And I would find that to be a really interesting like twist or option to Wally's powers. It's kind of my headcanon that literally, though, Barry was faster than Wally like Wally was literally in metabolically better shape. Yeah, interesting. Again, my head cannon. So, so let's talk about a little bit about Wally. So here's the thing about Wally. I'm really passionate about Wally as a character, and there's kind of a reason for that. And I think I'm. It just sounds completely ridiculous, but I think I'm uh, harboring a little guilt, Wally, because Barry Allen had always been my Flash. So even though Barry died in, I think it was 1986 with Infinite Crisis, I was 16 years old by then. I had been, that, that time when you start reading comics, you know, at least for me, which was learning how to read uh, on comics when I was quite young, and then carried through that, you know, 10, 11, 12 years until you're 16 years old, that's, that time frame feels like forever. So Barry's adventures always struck me as those cornerstone The Flash adventures. Even after Barry died, I had been programmed by comics to know that comic characters never die forever. And I just kept waiting <laughs> for his inevitable comic book return. And that wait turned into a, a, a weird form of excitement or happiness in a way like this idea that Barry Allen may be one of the few comic characters ever to die and not come back and that made him such a legacy and though Barry has returned in the comics now it's funny to me because now that Barry that Barry isn't real to me in my head Wally became my flash and for a very specific reason 
Mark Wade, this writer I keep referring to, has written a number of cornerstone series for The Flash. Series like Born to Run, which is a four issue mini series that Mark Wade re- wrote in like the early 90s. I don't think I read it until a little later than that. And the zero hour Flash one shot that I've talked about on the show a few times showed me that not only was Wally a, a worthwhile Flash, not only was he he not just an also a speedster Flash, that Wally was the Flash that I always wanted and never knew I wanted. And that ability of Mark Wade as a writer to shine a spotlight on the essential things that make up a character and get them into a comic series or or wherever he happens to write it is what makes Mark Wade, in my opinion, one of the best comic writers over the last several decades. Any th- series that he writes on, the other example I use is Fantastic Four. I read Fantastic Four when I was a kid. I enjoyed it. There's Fantastic Four animated series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, it wasn't until Mark Wade took over the Fantastic Four series that it was the first time I'd read it in decades. And he wrote this little, kind of like a little intro dissertation, which I think is essential to some of how I think about how characters can be handled or should be handled. At least superhero characters should be handled. And that is that these characters don't need to be fixed. They don't need a hot take. They don't need to be tweaked or improved or darkened or anything. That when you take the heart of a character, when you look at who they are and choose to put that in your comic or on the screen, they will not disappoint you. He understood who the Fantastic Four were and put them in the comics. And what's important here is he understood what makes Wally Wally and put him in a comic for me to understand it and accept him not as just my Flash, but the best Flash. I appreciate a tragic backstory. I, I, I get it. it. It shows strength and courage to overcome pain and loss and darkness in order to shine more light in the world. It's what many heroes are made of and what pushes them into the heroic path. Wally isn't that, and I love him for it. Wally believes in people, as they show so well in both Young Justice and the Justice League animated series. Wally's the grounding force in the Justice League animated series and is the hero who reminds everyone else that what they do has meaning for everyone, far beyond fighting the bad guys, meaning for the everyday people on the street, and that being a hero isn't just about fighting those villains and and saving lives. It's about supporting people in their everyday struggles. Even as the most powerful speedster in the DC universe, Wally's focus is always, always on the love of his family, whether that's his parents, his aunt and uncle, the Garricks, uh, in the case of Young Justice, Artemis, in the comics, Linda Park, or the family he forged with the Titans. There's a reason why Wally was the trigger for the New 52 rebirth. There is no other mainstream hero that I can think of with as much heart and passion for life. Wally, as a character, reminds us to pay attention to the things right in front of us. He reminds us that you don't need a tragic backstory to choose to do good in the world. That dreaming isn't a waste of time, and that sometimes those dreams can come true. So whether in comic arcs like Flashpoint Paradox, animated episodes like the Justice Lords episodes of Justice League Animated Series, or after the heartbreaking moments in Endgame, whenever you're gone, Wally, the world is a little darker, and we're all reminded to not take the friends, family, and beauty in our lives for granted. So that wraps up episode six of Secret Origins. The next time we'll be talking about Young Justice's second oldest sidekick, preceding Wally by almost two decades, and that's Speedy, a.k.a. Rory Harper. 
You can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the yjfiles.tumblr.com, and on our website, www.crashingthemode.com. If you enjoyed our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings really do help others find the show. If you do leave us a rating and review, please let us know, especially if you're outside the U.S. We have to look a little harder to find those. And even though Season 3 has been officially announced, please continue to spread the word to friends and family about the series. Hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology to get us more stories even sooner and get yourself up to speed for the Season 3 premiere. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Thank you.